Okay, here we go again for the next part of chapter four. This is probably the longest unit where you actually start to learn about some organisms that are in the water. So let's get started. We're still on classification biodiversity, but now we're on 4.2. So at this point, you should already know kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, and you should know that the genus and the species make up the scientific name that's called binomial nomenclature. So for today, let's talk a little bit about plankton. All plankton are going to be microscopic and they are going to be drifters, meaning they don't really swim well. So when you think of SpongeBob and you think of plankton, he doesn't really swim well. He is microscopic, he's very small. So there's a few types of plankton. The first one we need to know is phytoplankton. When you think of phyto, I want you to think of a photo. So phyto, photo, that sounds like photosynthesis. So phytoplankton do the process of photosynthesis. They are our producers and they are going to take light energy and convert it into glucose or chemical energy. An example could be a diatom or a dinoflagellate. You may see them as a drawing, but they will always give you the picture if they'd like you to sketch a diatom or dinoflagellate. Zooplankton. I want you to think of consumer. What do you go to the zoo for? animals. So a zooplankton is actually a consumer and they are going to consume other organisms. Examples of this would be a copepod or a jellyfish. Alrighty guys, make sure you review your plankton because it's super important. I'm cutting this video a little short because the next part we're going to start talking a little bit about our fish, and I'd like to keep them together in one video for you. So again, don't forget about phytoplankton. They're going to do photosynthesis. And then our zooplankton consumers, they're going to eat other organisms for energy. All right, everybody, make sure you check out your learning goals, and I'll see you next time.